Well, here we are, everyone. We have made it to week number three of the college football season. Week two gave us some surprises, some things we didn't expect, some things we maybe expected a little bit. But all in all, another great week of college football, and we're we're really getting into it. September is, you know, we're we're halfway through September, and I got to tell you. We got some interesting, juicy storylines already brewing in this young season of college football. Let's talk about week two. So, first things first, um, Texas Alabama. What can you say about this game? What can you say about the confidence that Quinn Ewers showed against the Alabama defense? What can you say about that? Again, a lot of respect to Texas. Again, my this is my team. First off. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm impressed for the most part. For the most part, there's still some things Texas can work on. Um, you know, Quinn's deep ball, you know, wasn't the greatest. He, he eventually got he eventually got the throws he needed to make. Um, you know, sometimes Texas kind of settled for points. You know, they kind of settled and didn't make the correct offensive adjustments. You know. In regards to sometimes on the field, you know, some drives, you know, kind of stalled out or, you know, they ended in points, but, you know, it wasn't, it, it was kind of head scratching, you know, with the play calls that Sarkeesian had. And on the other side, you know, Nick Saban has got to be furious. I mean, this defense was getting wrecked. They were getting picked apart, you know, at times. And the offense, oh boy. Saban's probably more mad about the offense because, my goodness, Jalen Milrow, he tried his best. He tried his best. But that offensive line is much weaker than it has been. I thought, you know, I thought that Alabama would be able to run the ball. You know, I, I've been saying it all season so long so far, you know, that Alabama's identity this year has to be behind the running game, behind Jace McClellan. And instead, Texas shut that down. So what do we get? So Nick's got him. He's he's trying to think of something. Well, Jalen can do the you know the deep ball. That's about it. Um, that's about it. Short throws. He got picked off a couple times. Milrow got picked off a couple times. Milrow tried to run. Texas you know adjusted with QB spies and and zone coverages and things like that. So Milrow just kept getting harassed all day or rather all night long, by the Texas defense. And Texas has risen up to number four in the AP poll. And for good reason, just a 34-24 dogfight, really. Although the game was, you know, very much in Texas's hands at m most of the points in this game. You can't tell me. You can't tell me any less. You can't tell me any less. I'm pretty happy. This is one of Texas's first hurdles in getting over the hump. They're not back yet. I'm sorry. You can't say that. They're not back. They're getting close, but they're not there yet. So Texas, congrats to them. Big time win against Alabama. Now Alabama has to go on to the road to take on South Florida this week and get some revenge, you know, in more ways to, in one, you know. So Texas A&M yet again. They got all this money. They got all these five-star talents that he stole from other, you know, other places like Ohio State and Clemson and Alabama and Texas and Oklahoma and stuff like that. And they just got absolutely bombarded by Tyler Van Dyke. How do you let this man throw five touchdowns on you? How do you let Miami, you know, just do whatever they want to do? I mean, they took they what took a kick back for six. They they. Again, Van Dyke at five touchdowns. AM, you know, tried to counter punch, but ultimately kept getting a two piece combo. Again, AM, the arrogance of this AM team, the arrogance of, of, of this team, you know, you gotta just call it Miami Danes, you know, you know, because again, Miami hasn't really been too relevant over the past, you know. 10 or so years, they, it's been like one or two years in there where they've been actually, you know, kind of really good. But for the most part, Miami has been kind of irrelevant. And, you know, a and was just just chopping it up, just talking all this trash. And look at what happened. 
they got beat in a game that, you know, I don't know. I don't know, man. Colorado, you know, why don't we talk about something, you know, that's actually positive. Like Colorado. That defense, Travis Hunter and company, they are legit. Shadra Sanders, his arm, legit. Cooked Nebraska's defense for over 300 yards yet again. Cooked them. Jeff Sims, absolutely terrible. Threw a pick. Lost a couple fumbles. Matt Rule needs to find somebody else to take the reins for, you know, this Nebraska team, like find another quarterback, go 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 sit down somewhere, you know, because you were supposed to be making money from Carolina paying you, but instead you wanted to coach, so you should have just sat out a year, man. Why did why did you just sit out a year to save yourself the embarrassment? Colorado has some big games coming up. Can they keep this hype up? Game day is coming this week, and we'll talk about you know some of these games in a moment. But yeah, we got ourselves some early Pac-12 drama. It, it is it is brewing, and aside from the Oregon State Washington State thing, Pac-12 is going to be interesting to follow until July first, twenty twenty four. So North Carolina, their defense still a liability against App State again. You know they had to duke it out in overtime again. Like, come on, man. Uh, we finally got some FCS over FBS upsets, like Nevada getting destroyed by Idaho, of all teams. Yes, Idaho is a top-tier FCS team this year. In fact, they're top 10 of the FCS. In fact, there was a top three FCS matchup on Saturday between Montana State and South Dakota State that nobody talked about, I don't think. At least... You know, I don't think I said anything about this game because I forgot it was even on. I forgot. I, I honestly didn't even know until I looked. And it was a good and that was a good one. So, yeah, the top tier of the FCS, of course, of course they're going to get, you know, the type of games. But Tennessee, Tennessee, you struggled with Austin P. It was like 6-6 six to six at one point. It was like 13-6 to six at half. Yeah, Tennessee pulled away, but... This is Austin P, who is not even, you know, this is an Austin P that's in a Big South OVC type thing, you know, right? That's what Austin P's in now. They're in the Big South OVC, you know, conglomerate now. How do you struggle with a team like that? That's not even a multi-bid FCS conference. That's a that's a one-bid league right there. How? I don't get it. Cyhawk game. What a disaster that game was. You had a bunch of presidential nominees from the Republican side come on over to watch this game. Trump, DeSantis, Ramaswamy, of course, um, as most of you know by now, I work in politics. So, yeah, talking about this game was going to be truly a disaster of all proportions. And the game itself was even more of a disaster. I mean... Iowa's offense still isn't very good. Iowa State, you know, their their QB backed. He got rocked around. He barely could throw for over 160 yards, I think. Keep in mind, I was indeed doing a little betting. But, yeah, this, this game was rough. Iowa State had so many opportunities to actually tie this game up. And yet, Iowa wins. And Yeah, Iowa's ranked. Clemson isn't. Because I don't know why Clemson was even ranked last week in the first place, but they're not ranked anymore. Thankfully, Clemson isn't. Iowa somehow is, and this offense still kind of stinks under marinara sauce. It still kind of stinks. Oregon, I gotta say, they had to survive against Texas Tech. That defense, and shout outs, you know, shout outs to this Texas Tech team. They are some fighters, man. Tyler Shud company, they are some fighters. They fought hard, but ultimately at the end, the defense saved the Ducks. So, yeah. Uh, Oklahoma, you know, they scored 73 against Arkansas State, and then they sputtered against future ACC member SMU. Yes, future ACC member SMU. Struggle, win, the personification of it. Yeah, Oklahoma pulled away with a couple touchdowns late, but they were up only 14 to 11 going into like the final. 10 minutes of this game. 
Yeah, I, I don't buy Oklahoma at all. I'll just say that much. And then Wisconsin, they got schooled by Cam Ward yet again. This time it was using his legs. You know, you know, last year he used his legs, but this year it was definitely apparent that he used his legs to just school the Badgers. And this air raid offense stinks for Nebraska, for not Nebraska, but Wisconsin. Nebraska has different problems altogether, but Wisconsin. Yeah, I thought Tanner Mordecai would be it because you can He's a guy that can throw the ball, can sling the rock around. But then again, those were against schools in the American. This is, you know, more more tough competition for him. You know that he backed out from a long while back. It's that that's why he went to SMU for a little bit. You know, but yeah, this isn't it. Wisconsin, this just isn't the type of offense for you. Go back up to center, please. Just just go back. This isn't working. Braylon Allen should be, you know, having 250-yard games each and every week. You know, he's having to settle and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, just, can't, I just can't take it. Like, Wisconsin, they weren't projected to be a good team anyway, but this is just really cements it. And yeah, Utah, they committed P.I. at the end against Baylor, but again, Baylor shouldn't have allowed this comeback to even happen in the first place. Uh, same thing for Tulane. Yeah, Michael Pratt got injured. Yes, there was a key penalty at the end, but again, you lost to Ole Miss. You lost to Lane Kiffin, who, again, let's, let's remind ourselves, last year, Lane Kiffin made some of the dumbest coaching decisions, and I was on him every single week about it for like five straight weeks. He made some of the weirdest calls, some of the worst calls I think I've ever seen in my entire life, you know, that kept Ole Miss from being, you know, from having a record that looked better. Because again, they were like, Ole Miss was like seven and five last year. Like they shouldn't have been seven and five. They should have been like, you know, or like eight and four or whatever. They, they, this, that Ole Miss team should have had 10 wins. I'm, I'm just going to be real with y'all. But Lane Kiffin's decision-making was just I was just mind-boggling. And he made a correct decision for once, multiple times in this game, actually. Crazy. And then Notre Dame, they keep the doubters in them silent. You know, Sam Hartman and company, Audrick Estime, I mean, my goodness, that man can run. That defense is scary. They... They harass Brennan Armstrong all day long, and NC State gets beat up. It was 45-17 at one point. Yeah, NC State's act on a ticky-tack touchdown at the end, but at the end of the day, Notre Dame is well-rested up for the slate. Now, you take a look at it. You take a look at the slate. Oh, my goodness. We got a Thursday night game. In which Bethune Cookman and and keep in mind, you know the swack is back to normal. So the swack is absolutely terrible again because not only have some swack teams lost to, you know FCS teams pretty badly, FBS teams pretty badly. They've also lost to D two, NAIA D three schools. You know other HBCU schools that are in D two and stuff like that. They've lost to those schools. So yeah. Swack is back to normal. The MEAC is also terrible, back to normal. So, yeah, this is disgusting right here. This slate is disgusting. All top, all top, Every single team in the top 25 is in action, but not all the games look very interesting, and I'll just say that off the jump. Not all the games look very interesting. I'm sorry. They just don't. And, I mean, we've got a lot of games that are going to look like they're going to be easy, Easy peasy win. So you can cross off games like Bethune Cookman, the Weber States, the Central, Western Michigans, maybe even San Diego State because they got demolished by UCLA. Um, maybe USF, maybe Western Kentucky, NC Central, Northern Colorado. Northern Colorado was absolutely terrible. Bowling Green, Hawaii, you know, Wyoming, probably. Um, yes, Wyoming did beat Texas Tech, but it was Texas Tech and maybe even Colorado State, you know. We need to focus on some other games. There's some other games that we do need to focus on. There's some other storylines for week three that we do need to focus on. So 
Let's talk about those. Again, chaos can brew. So just because there isn't a, you know, a matchup between two teams that are ranked in the top 25 does not mean that chaos can't brew. This is the type of week where chaos brews, chaos stirs, and it just, and the pot is just, you know, mixing and making something beautiful. And we're going to, we're definitely going to get something this week. We're, we're going to get something. So the games that, you know, I've been polling about in the community tab are teams, are games involving Tennessee, North Carolina, Kansas State, and LSU. Tennessee will take on Florida in prime time. North Carolina will take on Minnesota in the afternoon. Kansas State and LSU. Kansas State will play Missouri. LSU will play Mississippi State. And these four teams are the most vulnerable to lose. These are the games that will most likely have an upset in them. There, there's, there's something there. Um, Joe Milton, got to get it going. Terrible last week. This, this effort is not going to cut it against teams like Georgia. Not going to cut it. Drake May, he can't save North Carolina's defense forever. They showed up against South Carolina, but they disappeared against App State. You, you got to pick a side. Tar Heels, you got to pick a side. Kansas State, Will Howard, are they the real deal? You know, K-State fans have been kind of uppity about it. They've been, they've, been, they've been chomping at the bit. They've been trying to say that they're, that they're the big dogs now. But they got to prove it. Yeah, they were the Big 12 champs last year, but that was last year. Who cares about last year? It's a new year. It's 2023. Put up or shut up. And you get to prove that against a Missouri team that's technically not that great. But Missouri still has a chance to upset you. I mean, you look at the lines and stuff like that. It's like like a uh, like a four or five point spread in that game, I think. So an upset is ripe to happen. Same thing with Jake Daniels and the LSU Tigers or the Brian Kelly. Now, Mississippi State had to fight off Arizona. They came in overtime last week, and oh boy, LSU, this is this is the game that will make you put up or shut up. <laughs> you have to right the ship before this thing crashes. If it crashes and you start off the season one and two, oof, 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 terrible way for it to end because your season would be over right there you know if you lose to mississippi state ohio state i have big question marks for them they gotta fine tune that offense yuck yeah, yeah kyle mccord and company they were able to you know get some things together in downtown state but ryan day complaining oh well we can't score this many points because of the timing rules the timing rules have nothing to do with it timing rules have nothing to do with it if other teams can score 50, 60 points, like Penn State beating up on Delaware, like 65 to 7, then y'all can do it too. It's just the biggest question is McCord and Devin Brown too, but he's probably not going to be playing that much. But it's going to be on McCord to get it going. Again, the talent is spread everywhere. What the problem is in an offense like Ohio State's, you know, the centerpiece is that quarterback that can get it all done. And a guy like Kyle McCord, similar to C.J. Stroud last year, and nobody wanted to listen to me about it, he's not going to cut it. When you have a Mecca Buku, when you have Marvin Harrison Jr., those two guys should be getting 100 yards each and every week somehow. One, one or two of them should be getting 100 every single week. I'm just being real. So, the fact that Ohio State can, you know, whine and complain, you gotta, you gotta fine tune it, or else Notre Dame will eat you alive next Saturday night. They'll, they'll eat you alive. And finally, Carson Beck, he gets some kind of test. It's South Carolina, the same South Carolina team that got ravaged by North Carolina with their poor O line. Will this will this O line be a little bit improved against Spencer Rattler? You know, for, well for Spencer Rattler against Georgia, the number one team in the country. We'll find out. We will find all that out on Saturday, not on Thursday because that game is not going to matter. That Boone Cooper game, but Saturday, 
24 games for the most part. There's some other games with some teams that are undefeated. Yeah, no, James Madison can't do anything this year. I, I, I did, I forgot. But you know, teams like ULM, um, you know, there's still Air Force to watch out there. The only team really running the flex bone offense still out there unbeaten. There's other teams out there that are interesting as well. There's other games that are interesting, but again, the Tennessee Florida game, the North Carolina Minnesota game, you know, Minnesota team that's not that great offensively. Kansas State, Missouri, and LSU, Mississippi State. Those are the games of the week this week. So those are the games you need to be watching. If you're not watching those four games, you're going to have to be on ESPN all day anyway. You know, you're going to start with Coach Prime and you're going to end with Coach Prime. So you might as well stick on ESPN all day. For once, yes, you, you have to stick with the mouse. I know. Crazy stuff, right? So in that case, um... The Man Cup may end tonight. It may end. So I'll have to get something in tomorrow, more than likely. If not, it may be Thursday. If not, it may be Friday. If not, it may be Saturday night or going into Sunday morning if the Man Cup somehow gets to Game 7. But it's probably not going to Game 7. So we'll talk lacrosse at some point this week. The NFL definitely going to be talking about um, some unfortunate things in the AFL tomorrow. In that case, and we're going to wrap it on up here tonight, everybody. So, big boy signing out, and I'll see you all next time. There, I made a short two, which is crazy. I don't know how I did that, but I, made, I did it. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be cutting up and making shorts. Yeah. Good night, everybody. I got work in the morning. Good night.